Hello, Soul Garden family, and welcome back to another episode of Meditation Vibration. I'm your Mindful Cruise Director, Julie Zipper, and happy birthday, Aries! Yay! These are my Aries jazz hands. Yay! <laughs> That's my dad. My dad's an Aries. I know this vibration really well. I love this vibration. What is this vibration that I'm talking about? Well, Aries, it's the first sign of the zodiac. It's the first house. This is the baby of the zodiac. This is where our sense of self and ego lies. So we are going to dive into this vibration and see what's here for us. But before we do, I just have to say, this is my one year anniversary of meditation vibration. Yay! Leave me some happy birthdays or happy anniversaries. Let me know who you are, what your story is, what your experience with meditation is, and um, if you're a fan of the show, let me know. I want to talk to you. I want to see you. I want to connect with you. Okay, so in this first chapter of Aries, I want to talk about ego. I think ego gets a bad rap. What do you think? Uh, what I hear, especially in the world of meditation and mindfulness or yoga or, you know, the spiritually hyperconscious world, um, I hear a lot of negative talk on the ego and wanting to, to conquer it, wanting to be victorious over it, wanting to, you know, it's like this very, and that's actually a very uh, Aries vibration too, right? Ah, the victor of my ego. But it feels like um, wanting to suppress it to me wanting to annihilate it. But guess what? Our ego is there on perfect purpose. There's a perfect design to it. If it's all good, and if it's all God, then guess what? God is in the humanness, and God is in the ego. There's something to it. Everybody on this earth ride has one. So how can we come into a balanced relationship with our ego? How can we walk hand in hand our awareness in the driver's seat, our ego in the passenger seat, and have dominion over our ego, but not try and stick it in the trunk of the car. <laughs> well, the first invitation for this week is, I'm just going to invite you to listen. I want you to listen to what your ego has to say. There's something there for you. And if you can cultivate the image of your ego being a precious child, it's a child. You have to care for it. Bring your inner cancer spirit out, okay? Care for, nurture, mother this aspect of you that maybe doesn't know how to walk yet, or maybe is afraid of the jungle gym on the playground, or maybe is afraid that it's not going to get what it wants or what it desires. It's not going to get that popsicle at the end of the day, okay? This is your ego. Care for it. Love it. Listen to it. I had a powerful experience about a month ago when I actually stopped all this hyperactivity that I was in and I was given the opportunity to just sit in dialogue with what was going on within me, with my needs, with my wants, with my fears and it was so powerful to me because I didn't know that certain things were in there. Why? Because I wasn't listening. So we're all going to go within and we're going to listen and one more thing before I go, if you're in Austin, I'm coming this weekend to teach a workshop so Facebook me or email me here on Soul Garden and I'll give you the information. Okay, turning within, my friends. Hmm. Ah, let's just take a few deep breaths together. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Good. And so with each breath, letting go, letting go, surrendering to this present moment that is always available, always here, always alive with love and peace and harmony. And in this space, I just want you to call in the image of your inner child, your ego, this aspect of you, and just see what it looks like. Give it an image. It might be a color. It might be something interesting like an animal, but just go with it. And once you see it, I just want you to communicate to it that you are here to listen. What does it have to say? You can ask it about something specific, like you've been knocking on my door about this relationship or about this job. Talk to me. What do you have to say? What's going on? What are your fears? What are your desires? What do you want? Or you could even make it about life in general. 
sweet ego, what are you barking at me for? What are you afraid you're not going to get? What is it that you desire more than anything? Mm. And just listen. Listen as it expresses its beautiful, perfect self to you. And hold that large container around it. You're the parent. You're the mother to this, okay? You're greater than this. So you can hold it with grace and ease. And once you are done listening, once you've heard some things, I want you to thank it for spending this time with you and for sharing what's going on. You can give it a big mama bear hug or send it some mama bear love from your heart chakra. And then as you exhale, just see it starting to just dismantle back into the nothingness from whence it came. And then you can open your eyes and repeat this. I would actually encourage you to repeat this for the next seven days and just listen. More and more will come up. So many times in meditation, we're listening to God. We're listening to our higher wisdom self. So here's a change. Listen to your ego. <laughs> see what it has to say and hold it with your God self. Okay, my friends, I'll see you next week for Chapter 2, Sun and Aries. And until then, live, love, be. So God and